In tonight's Take Care of Your Money, Jeremiah Jacobson looks into how digital wallet apps work and whether they're safe. Cash once was king, but more wallets are now getting ditched for digital. It started with payment programs from big names like Apple, Samsung, and Google. It's now grown into apps that let friends directly exchange funds through their phones. You may have even seen the ads for Zelle. I told you pay me with Zelle and I'll take care of the rest. Run by several of the nation's largest banks. Now we can split the tab with Venmo. And Venmo, owned by PayPal. It has more than 2 million reviews on Apple's App Store and has become so popular you might even hear it as a verb. I'll Venmo my share of the rent. Everyone is getting into the, uh, into the mix because it's, it can be so convenient and yeah. easy to use. But easy has its pros and cons. Just ask Mike Johnson, who leads the Security Technologies Program at the U of M's Technological Leadership Institute and previously oversaw operations risk management for a local bank. Features are important. Security needs to be as important. People need to demand that their devices and that their applications are secure. Most digital wallet apps let you set up an account tied to your bank account or credit card. Exchanging money then only requires the email address or phone number of another person. Simple, but potentially problematic. Email addresses and phone numbers, for example, are not identification tools. The people think that they are, but they are, they are not. They can be spoofed, they can be taken over. And so systems that are completely designed based on those controls it have an inherent weakness. Connecting a digital wallet to a bank account is usually free. Sounds appealing, since connecting a credit card often adds a fee per use. That's how these apps make money. But credit does offer the protections you already get with that card. The apps don't include any buyer or seller protection. If you have $10,000 in your checking account and a criminal gets access to the funds, they could theoretically drain all $10,000. Versus the credit card, you can work with the credit card company to dispute the charges. But these apps can be used safely with the right precautions. Johnson says digital wallets should only be used to exchange money with someone you already know, something Venmo and Zelle say right on their websites. The apps also advise against paying for goods or services from a stranger, like sports tickets or something you bought off Craigslist. Instead, the apps are best for things like splitting a dinner tab with someone you trust. If you read the agreements for most of these services, they use that word quite a lot. These are for trusted transactions with trusted parties, people you know and trust, and so the word keeps coming up. Johnson also recommends strong two-factor authentication to log in and turn on your notifications, both for the app and your connected bank or credit account, so you'll know right away if someone else gets access. And keep in mind, even if you don't use these apps now, you could get invited in, since money can be sent to any email or phone number, even without being already connected to an app. Cash is dead for most people, many people. Jeremiah Jacobson, CARE 11 News.